Going to do a little bit of change up this morning. Hopefully it's not disastrous. Uh, you know, fortunately, I study the Word of God all the time. So I've always got a sermon, whether I repair one for the pulpit or not, and I'm always into something. Well, I changed my mind on the way here this morning. And a matter of fact, it was not too far down this road coming here about what I was going to preach this morning. Because uh, I got to thinking about it. It is a new year. I'm going to preach my first, y'all heard it here, New Year's message. I mean, I've preached on New Year's Day before, but I don't. I generally don't preach on the holidays or whatever they're about. But I'm going to preach a New Year's message today. It's going to be a little bit different. And, and you know what? When a preacher hadn't poured a lot into a study, it means he preaches for two hours. That's what study does. It, it keeps the sermons to 30 minutes. <laughs> so I don't think we're going to be here that long. Uh... I just got to thinking about you all who I was coming to see this morning, who I was going to bump my elbows with, who I was going to hug and shake hands, looking, looking forward to it all morning. Uh, this, you're very well aware of, is the first day of the Gregorian calendars 2023, the year 2023. It's been a long time since Jesus has been around in it. But he's here in what? Spirit and what? That's right. You all said it. You all know that. He's here. He's around. He's always around. Uh, I'm going to make a little bit of spectacle of myself, which I do a lot when I'm preaching. And some preachers get mad at me and some people, other people do that. Steve, you ought not talk about yourself when you're preaching. You want me to make spectacle of your life? I make spectacle of mine, but I'm not going to make spectacle of yours. I think a guy's all right using himself as an example as long as he ain't bragging. Because we have nothing to brag on, right? Did we not learn that in Sunday school class this morning? Peter said what? In the name of Jesus Christ does this man walk. I didn't. You act like I did something. I didn't. Peter said Jesus did it. But let me make a little bit of spectacle of myself. And I got to thinking about it. Thinking about y'all this morning. Thinking about seeing your faces. Uh, by the way, it's always just in time to, when I see y'all's faces. And when we miss a, a, a service... Like all of you all have said this morning, it just seems like a long time before the next service, right? Let me tell you this story. Uh, me and the daughter there, when she was little, little bitty girl, young, I don't know, probably, I don't know, 10, 8, 9, 10. I don't know, this young girl. We was walking, I was, I was telling June this story this morning, and I, I had not planned on talking about it until now. We was, I had just been, I just had brain surgery. And the daughter and the son and the wife, you know, he's worried about big old strong dad all messed up now from brain surgery. Couldn't barely walk. Could barely talk. Uh, spent a year learning how to walk and the kids helped me on that. Well, I got brave one day and me and the daughter went out. We're going to walk out in the desert. I don't know if she remembers this or not. Y'all might ask her about it. She's a long time ago. We decided to go walk out in the desert and we found this kind of a high, high flat spot Probably wide as them pews are flat spot that went around in, in a pond dam, believe it or not, out in the middle of the desert in Arizona. You don't think of ponds in Arizona. Well, they had one. So I'm me and, me and the daughters enjoying the day walking down that pond on the top of that pond dam and, you know, enjoying the, the desert and the scenery. Glad I could walk, you know, that's not too far after my brain surgery. I didn't walk too good, but anyway, got to the edge of that I got a little too close to the. Do you remember that? You do. It probably traumatized her a little bit. I got a little too close to the edge of that pond dam, and it was real steep through the through the thorns and the thistles in the rough desert. I got a little too close, and guess what? Dumb dad did. Got a little too confident, walked a little too fast, and stepped right off on the edge of that. You know what happened? Dad rolled through the bushes and the trees and the dirt and the dust. Ow, uh, 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 uh. I rolled all the way to the bottom of that pond dam. And I'm telling you, I was in them days, I was, I was, you know, kind of feeling sorry for myself. 
I was laid there at the bottom of that pond dam thinking I, I'm never moving again. I'm done. After that stupid, after that roll, I am finished. Leave me alone. Laying there in all that pain. And I looked up there and little sweetheart there was crying. Just imagine her little bottom lip shaking. Y'all look, see her. Just when the next time you look at her, just imagine that little bottom lip shaking. She was crying. She was looking like, what am I supposed to do, you know? And I was laying there thinking, I ain't never, but I looked up there and saw her. Saw my little sweetheart up there. I love her. And I recognized she loved me. And she was concerned about me. And she wanted more than anything, I'm sure, to come down there and pick me up and carry me. But she couldn't do it. She's a little girl. That's how I feel about y'all. I live in a world where we live in a world where we just don't feel like it anymore, do we? One day at a time. What in that song? Sweet Jesus. And sometimes it gets a little hard and you don't feel like it anymore. Well, just look at your brethren that you go to church with. They love you. Get up off that pond dam and out of that dirt and that brush and work your way back up to the top of that pond dam to comfort your daughter and say it'll be all right. That's the way I feel about y'all when I see y'all. When I'm thinking about why, why do it. What's the point? It hurts. It's painful. It's exhausting. But I remember you all. I don't know. I'm just hoping you all like me. But I'll tell you this much. I like you. And I picture you and I see you. And you know what I do? I, 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 hit, I hit my little, my, my two little password letters to open up my computer to turn on my Bible to study the Word of God. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, and I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to see them people. I'm going to be with them. Have you thought about that? This is a new year. This is a new year's message, right? New year's beginning. What do we want? We want to at least learn to love one another and realize and recognize how important each one of us are to one another. That's, that's a good thing to learn. That's a good new year's resolution. Or you can make a resolution to make a million dollars. Good luck with that. Can't, you know, some goals we just can't reach. But I can tell you what, I can learn to be thankful for you, God's people. You lift me up. You hold me up. You walk in these doors. I'm not a good, I, I, I'll admit to you, I'm not a good prolific speaker. I am one of them uneducated people, hillbillies. But you come and you show up anyway. And you open your Bibles and you listen. Even though I mess up. I mess up sometimes and I say the wrong thing and I put the, I am so thankful for you. So be encouraged this new year that you are, be encouraged that you are an encouragement to other people. Who? Every single one of you are an encouragement to somebody in this room. I I believe that with all my heart. And you know what? We ought to be thankful Terry got a little bit of this sermon on the way over here. I'm sorry, I, I moved my arms too much when we singing. I'm running out of air. As a matter of fact, let me take off my jacket. I was thinking, I'm thankful to the Lord that I can read. I believe that. I'm thankful for. But you know what I've, I realized coming over here? I am more thankful to the Lord that I read, not can read, but that I do read the Bible. You can th you sit down and read your Bible. You can thank God for that, and be happy and, and and be spiritually prosperous, knowing that God that God made it to where you can read the Bible. Do you pray? I'm thankful that I'm I, that I can pray. But I'm thankful that God allows me to pray. And I'm thankful that God allows me and has shown me how to pray correctly. If there's a lot of prayer in this world that's not accurate. People pray for the wrong things. You see it, you hear it. Go to a basketball game, a football game. Listen to the prayers. But be thankful that you can pray to God. Be thankful that you know He's listening. That's, that, 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 that is a blessing from God. That you, that you can actually sit down and pray. Maybe, maybe you don't have that much confidence in yourself. 
Maybe you don't have that much confidence in your, in your prayer life, but I'm going to tell you, you know God's listening. And you know what? Be thankful that, for that. Not, not that God's listening. I mean, be thankful that God's listening, but be thankful that you know that God's listening. Because some people pray hoping there is a God and hoping He's listening. You pray knowing there's a God and you pray knowing He's listening. Isn't that something to be thankful for? Is there a lot we can be thankful for? Can we, can we, can we realize that this first day of 2000? In 23, the, the outlook for 2023, if I've learned correctly, which don't know that I have because it's not biblical, it's not going to be good for this world. Uh, uh, gas prices already started jumping. And I've heard that after the new year is over that they're really going to jump. Let me tell you, another, make, me, make a little more spectacle of my life. When I was a kid... I had a 1967 Ford F100 with a 240 cubic inch three speed on the tree Ford. Y'all, y'all remember those? I'd pull up to the gas pump and I remember it to this day. It was 80 cents a gallon at that little Phoenix station there in D Queen, Arkansas. You know what I'd say? Five dollars. Give me five dollars. I worked at that Phoenix station for a while. You know, most people would come in there and say, give me five dollars worth. Five dollars worth of gas at 85 cents a gallon. I'm thankful that I had the five dollars. I'm thankful that gas was that cheap. But you know how much gas is today? But can you put gas in your vehicle? Are you able to? It's not, you know, you can't, you, you put, go, go get five dollars worth of gas now. You can probably make it to the next gas station on the other side of town with that amount of gas. But ain't you thankful that we're able to get up and drive and drive to a church that's so far away? And I know it's not as far away for y'all as it is for us. But aren't you glad you was able to get here this morning? Ain't you glad you was able to put gas in your vehicle? Arthur? Four, 14 cents a gallon. I can't even imagine that. Crazy. I remember when it got a dollar a gallon, this one guy, I thought he thought the world was going to come to an end. He thought the world was coming to an end. God's coming back. Second coming's around the corner. Gas is a dollar a gallon now. Well, he ain't come. But he's coming again. And I'm thankful that I know that. Now, I'm not just thankful that I know that, you know, intellectually. I'm thankful that I'm able to believe that. You know, knowing something and believing something are two different things. How much do I believe it? Well, that time will tell. Do I believe it more than you? I don't know. But I do at least believe that He's coming again. And I'm thankful that I have the knowledge of that and can be thankful that He has shown me and you, I suspect, because heads are shaking all over the place. Yes, He's coming back. I'm thankful for that. There's a lot to be thankful for. We live in a world like what is there to be thankful for? Well, are you a child of God? Be thankful for that. Huh? When you die, is God going to bring you home to heaven? Be thankful for that. You believe that. But be thankful that you know that and believe it and trust in that. Be thankful to God for that. Because within ourselves, we can't, we can't, wrap, we can't understand heaven, hell, any of that stuff. But, but by God's grace, we believe that and we know it to be true. Uh, I have my days. You probably have your days, depending on how much sin's in your life. It goes unrepented of and undealt with. But we just need to learn to be thankful. Well, what's the Bible say? We'll get to that in a second. Shouldn't we? If you want to know what to be thankful for, how we going, how we really need to find out? What am I need to be thankful for? Gas being 85 cents a gallon? 14 cents a gallon? What was it this morning? $3.10 a gallon? I understand it's going to go to like $6 a gallon in six months. That's what I understand. I don't know. But there are the most important things to be thankful for is what you know about God. Hmm? You know about God by the grace and mercy of God. You believe in God because of God. Because of God's Word. Can't we at least be thankful for that? When we're standing there at the gas pump, give me $5 when it's $4.99 a gallon. 
How far is that gallon gonna go? I don't think my truck could go from here to the gas station on, on a gallon, would it? I don't think so. But I believe we ought to be thankful that we know that God has things firmly in His grasp in 2023 just like He did in 19, 1923 or 1983 or 1993, just whatever's prevalent, whatever you think about. God has it grasped. He has it all grasped in His hands tightly. He has not worried about it. He does not fret over the things of the world. Uh... You know, you know one thing I, I've, I've learned from Scripture, and I'm not going to get into it today, is that God dials in on those who dial in on His Word. Because people who dial in on His Word will, without a shadow of a doubt, dial in on His people. And dialing in on God's people, that's what we need, isn't it? To know we're not alone. What is that song, Kate, and we're going to sing next week? No, never alone. We're never alone. Be thankful for that. Uh, now, turn in your Bibles, if you will, with me. Uh-oh. He ain't even read the Scripture yet and he's already preaching. How long are we going to be here? Not long. Turn to... Let me get my glasses on. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. This is a holy man of God, the Apostle Paul, writing to a group of people, a church in Thessalonica. Guess what we are here? A group of people, a church. He didn't write this to us, but let me tell you, thanks be to God, he written it for us. Why? Because we're a church. This, what we're going to read in, in just a second, is for us this verse of Scripture we're about to read right here lets us off the hook. Don't we feel like we're on the hook to do this or that? And what do we do? How do we do it? Go to the Word of God and we'll find that God doesn't ask that much of us. Look at verse 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Let's just read that one verse, all right? In, and we're going to read it like a preacher reads it. Sometimes we get to reading the Word of God at the house. We just kind of fly through it and don't pay much attention. Let's just read it like you're going to, like you're going to talk about it, like the preacher asked you to talk about it uh, someday. You, you read this verse, and I want you to come talk about it. So that's how we're going to read this verse. All right. In every thing, huh? In everything. Does that mean some things? What does everything mean here in America? Everything. Give what? Y'all reading with me? In everything, give what? Nice. Amen. In everything, give. Th is there? Is, is, what you know? What we learned from that little uh, verse right there, right to the right to the colon. Is there is something to be thankful for? Is there is there not? Can we not prove it just based on what we just read in that one little line? That's in everything, give thanks. So what should we be, y'all? Thankful people. Can we be? Yes. How? In everything, give thanks. I don't care if your gas is 14 cents a gallon or whatever. Be thankful you can get gas. You know, there are some people who can't, but they'll find their way to church too. And then here we go. What are we supposed to do, y'all? How are we going to please God? What, what do I need to do? What does the Bible say? In everything, give thanks. Why? For this. It, read, it to me, read it back to me like we're preachers. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hey, now guess what we just learned? How to be in God's will. How do we please God? What does the Bible just say right there? Do so many uh, Hail Marys? Read your Bible so many hours a day? Preach some, uh, pr pray so many times a day? Get into legalistic... No, what does He say here? Be ye... Huh? Thankful. Thankfulness. Why? Because this is the will of God. You want to know what God's will is? It's a simple thing. Religion has complicated it. Has it not? 
How many people have been slaughtered in the last 2,000 years in Christ's name? By people, you know what their problem were? Were very thankful, were they? And if you're thankful, you won't be going around slaughtering people, will you? You'll be thankful for what you have. By the way, here we are in America today. Could you imagine going to church in Paul's day? Mm -hmm. You know, they killed, they eventually slaughtered him. Killed him. Who's going to kill you? Who's coming knocking at your door to get you? What did Paul say? Be thankful in everything. You know, Paul spent most of, a lot, not a most, but a lot of his ministry, three or four times, I can't recollect, got arrested and put in a dungeon for Christ's sake. And what does he say? What does he write? In all things, be thankful. Why? Because that's the will of God. Just be thankful. Whether you're in jail or out of jail, or the gas prices, or whoever's president, be thankful because God is in control. This is God. This is this is God's will concerning you. Ooh, I have a little more. Turn with me to Colossians chapter three. You know what we just read in Second or First Thessalonians might be one of those good verses to just take your ink pen and write about. And when you're flipping through your Bible and you come to that verse right there, what a wonderful verse, isn't it? We're not, you know, I I like to preaching and teaching through the books, but I'm, we're looking at a subject this morning. Be thankful what in the year two twenty thousand twenty three? When every day of this year, till when? Till the Lord comes back or two thousand twenty four? Whatever comes first. But turn with me to Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. And let, this is the Apostle Paul, holy man of God. That means what he writes is the Word of God. When a holy man writes something, he is writing the Word of God. God says through Paul, and let the peace of God rule in your Hearts. What's the will of God? Let the peace of God rule in your heart. What does that mean? That know this, that God's got it all taken care of. He has you firmly in His grasp. He has everything firmly in His grasp. Nothing's going to go awry from Him. Everything's going to happen the way He says it's going to happen. He's bringing man to a point His way. And let the, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. That don't, that don't count in America. We've got too many. We've got too many guys running for president, and we can listen to them, each one of them every day, all we want, right? All the all the all the arguing, and we need to get on somebody's side. We need to take up arms, like they did in the old days, and fight fight again. No, he says here, let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye what? Let's all say it together. And be ye thankful. thankful. Is that that's just a couple verses we looked at on that subject? God, trust me, there's many more. Let's in 2023 learn to just be thankful that God gives us the time of day. How does He do that? Through Jesus Christ. Well, who is that? Well, let's see what the Bible says. That's how we find out who He is. He's our Savior. Be thankful that we know that. And let's let the peace of God rule in your heart. Do you ever get all wound up about how things are going? I mean, you don't have to lie. You don't have to raise your hand. But you ever get wound up about who's president, what the president's doing, and, and what the governor's doing? You ever, you, ever let that, you ever get just so wound up? Well, being wound up is the opposite. Excuse me. Is the opposite of letting the peace of God rule in your heart. You want to be wound up? Or do you want to let the peace of God rule in your heart? How about this? Let's just be thankful for what? I don't you tell me. You think about it while you're eating your lunch and supper. Think about it when you read your Bible. Think about it when you think of each and every person that comes to this church. Think about that. 
and just learn to be thankful and know that God is, is God. You want to be right with God and be in His will. You know that. You know what? Being in God's will. That don't, I ain't talking about salvation. You're saved, but you want to be in God's will. Do what God wants you to do. Live in according to how God wants you to do. We've learned that. Be thankful for things. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. What does that mean? The, what, do you, what do you know about God? He's what? Omnipotent, all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipresent. That means He's everywhere. Cannot we let the peace of the Almighty God who created heaven and earth for His honor and glory, can't we have the peace of God in our hearts? Can we? Can we do that in 2023? Are you a believer? Are you a child of God? Do you even believe? Let me tell you, let me talk to you believers just one more second. You believe. Thank God for that. You believe in a God and you trust in Him and you have confidence in Him. You know who to thank for that? God. Thank God for that. He didn't have to do that, but He did. So that's at least one thing to be thankful for. If you are not able to be thankful for your salvation, that, that can change. That's an easy fix. Just trust in God. I believe. I believe in God. I believe that God is who He says He is. And I believe that God is everything that preacher says He is. I believe in Him and I want to live. I want to live that way. I want to live for Him. That's a simple thing, isn't it? So in 2023, be thankful for God. And then if you're not a child of God, in 2023, the first day of this year, just trust in Jesus Christ as your personal savior and then live in a live of life of thanksgiving based on what we've learned from the word of God. How about that this morning? Uh, we'll have a verse of invitation.